Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, we're coming in with the fourth season of Love and Marriage. Yeah, Hustle, man. Season one, Mar so, so, Mar so Messy. <laughs> we, like, legit, we started this as season one. I never realized or thought that we would get to season four, four yeah. with this show from what it was intended to be to what it is now. Right. Totally yeah. different, but we've been along for the ride. We skipped the season. We're not going to talk about it. But anyway, let's go ahead and plug our shirts in because y'all yeah, won't ask. Um, we get our shirts from powerandblack.com. We have a long-standing coupon code with them that will save you. 25% off your entire order. It's my name, Lynette. L-Y-N-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Yeah. Go ahead and get y'all some It's going to be pinned down in the pinned comments, man. Yeah, y'all yeah, see it. Y'all yeah. see it. All right, let's go ahead and start off from the beginning. We have Marceau and Tisha sitting down, eating dinner and whatnot. They get to talking. And to me, they always seem to show Tisha in the worst light when it comes yeah. to self-confidence, trust, trust within her marriage, insecurities all of that because now we're we're coming off the tail end of the reunion Man. and the skit that happened after the reunion on social media and as much as she says she does not read the comments and stuff oh. we'll get there um huh. obviously she does and it does get to her mm -hmm. so much so that marso had to tell her listen we're not gonna give this any attention we're not gonna breathe life into the situation no, we're not going to keep talking about it. Here's my thing when it comes to Ariana. I'm going to call her by name, but that's what her mama named her. Um, she is the unofficial cast member that does not get paid to be a part of this show. Right. Granted, they don't bring her up a lot, but when they do, they bring, bring her, her up. up. Yeah. <laughs> and then she has something to continuously talk about that they're using me in my likeness. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, we start off addressing her without addressing her. Next thing we know, she's going to be on social media doing what she does. And it's going to be a spiral effect. You know what I'm saying? Right. So let's get into Marceau. Marceau has come into terms with, I've gotten successful. I love mm. success. Success tastes great, looks great, feels great. But at the end of the day, when do you ever stop chasing it? Right. Like, when exactly. is enough enough? Right. And he had this moment where he was like, you know what? I just felt like I needed to go somewhere, clear my head, be where I could not be reached and whatnot. All of that sounds sus to me. But at the same time, <laughs> as an introvert myself, you understand. I understand it. it right. Because I oftentimes need times where I'm alone. But there's also ways to do it. Right. Because Tisha said that all of a sudden, Marcel wanted to go to Africa. She never been to Africa. He's never been to Africa. And he didn't invite her to go. He was like, no, I need to do Good. this on my own. Mm -hmm. As an introvert, I get yeah. it. But well, as a married, married introvert... You say, don't get it. That needs to be yeah. communicated. That needs to be agreed upon. Right. Because it does make you look like you're trying to be off the grid. Yeah. And especially coming out of, like you said, of the reunion with this picture. Because this yeah. picture got everything going and... People talking about the cheating and all that kind of stuff. But I'm right. glad you brought up what he talking about that he's tired of trading time for like money. Honest, yeah. And we said this year is that we we love the drama of the show. And the joke gives us that because yeah. everybody got drama. But really pay attention to like their successes and their failures in business. Because a lot of us are it's trading our bonus. time. So just because that Marso them are successful business owners... He talking on the same level as us, still trading time for money. That mm -hmm. the money is so good, and you chasing after that money right. that you that you forget to live. And mm -hmm. that's what he was talking about. And we do it. We do. We constantly chasing our money to only hoard and save up the money and scared to use it. Yeah. So you was running from poverty <laughs> just to, to only to get to only get the money and still have the poverty mentality and not spend it and hoard it up because you're afraid to go back. In the scary city. So you continue to trade your time for money and wear yourself out. <laughs> so I know Marto sometimes is full of skit, but he be he be giving us some good wisdom, man. Yeah, that's probably why I like him a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so let's go ahead and change the scenes. And we have Marto going over there to see Lou. So I guess we're going to have the Whitlows this season once again. You know, the petitions didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> They're not off the show. They're back. Um, and with all fairness, most of the time it's not Lou. 
is his wife mm -hmm. Tiffany. But you know, you can't separate the couple, so <laughs> we don't like either one of them. But anyway, <laughs> so Marta, shout out to him, his logo. I like it. Yeah, it, it is. It's so dope. him. But now he's in there, he has an opportunity to tell Lou that in the midst of this divorce, I'm trying to create a normalcy with my children and Mel's not allowing me to see my kids, speak to my kids. She has two phones, one for the plug, one for hose, but she always keep the one off that I have the number to. So I'm not able to talk to my kids. Do I believe that? I don't, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I guess at the end of the day, I don't care because both of them be on their BS when mm -hmm. they need to be. But Martel is but, the one that's going to let you know about it. But at the same time, like we always say, don't put the kids in the middle of it. Yeah. Please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because the kids always want to be the casualties of all the adult all booze kid. So then Lewis, you know, they're still talking about the reunion and the whole thing about the men and transparency. All in a nutshell, after all of this, all of this talking, the reunion explaining why they had so many issues with his wife when it came to being in everybody's business, wanting everybody to be so transparent until it's time to talk about y'all business. Right. He still does not understand where everybody is coming from. And I'm sitting here like, how many times or how many flashcards <laughs> do we have to say one plus one equals ding, ding, hmm. ding. Like, I'm sitting here like, I don't understand. How is it that everything is in your face and you still don't understand it? But I do like what Lou said, where he was talking about, you know, how the men sometimes have a rule in place when it comes to what they will pillow talk about, what they won't pillow talk about, yeah. what's off limits, what's the bro code, until one of the other bros decide... Yeah. They want to break the they bro code. They want to break the bro code and put Skid out there. And they're the talking about the picture. <laughs> the and I agree with Lou on that one. So if we're going to have these tight-lipped, underlying rules, invisible, unwritten rules when it comes to what we will share, what we won't share, what we would do to protect or damage each other's reputation, right? then that needs to be the, the flowing rule all the way across the board to death do your pot. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah, because I would have never, I would have never did that. No, me personally. But we know Marceau. But Mar at the same time, Mar your brother. Yeah, but we know. I mean, Marceau, we, he don't, you know, he care, but he don't care. He does. Cause he, he's the big jokester. Like he said, I was only doing it because Reese said he wasn't there. So I'm like, oh, you was there, but you're not thinking about the repercussions that it, that that it has towards your wife and you know your brother and your brother's wife. So yeah, I would definitely would under, hope that he would understand that part. Yeah, it was a joke, right. ha 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 ha. But my family is hurting because of the joke. Right, right. Because he never said sorry. He never oh, said he, yeah. He never no, said sorry. No. Yeah. And even if he did say sorry, sorry is like it's a not little a, too late now. But at least, but at least they know that a hey, you know that you was would. you was being a being an a by posting in the joke, but you realize it hurt us. Okay, we appreciate you apologize. We know it ain't gonna fix it, but at least you apologize. At least you acknowledge that it happened. Right. And especially with all the rumors going around about them cheating. That'd have been one reason why I wouldn't have posted it. Yeah. <laughs> we, let's talk about it. Oh, before y'all I forgot I had this big A band aid right there. Me and my dermatologist are going through this testing phase with new medications to deal with my hyperpigmentation. And I'm peeling like a fish, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I am so scaly. But right here I have a big patch of scales. Don't worry about it. We're gonna we're gonna get it fixed. We're gonna get it fixed. It is it is not um insulin resistance evil. <laughs> <laughs> I just have hyperpigmentation. But um Kimmy, y'all don't stress my girl out so much. Yeah. That she don't have to get her a support dog. <laughs> she said the dog <laughs> it is uh, it's for unconditional love. So the dog is the only one can deliver that love that Jesus is talking about. That unconditional love comes through the dog. And I'm laughing because <laughs> one is true and then two, my, my life coach kind of told me the same thing. Because she was like, Lynette, you're not a nurturer. And she was like, women are born to be nurturers. And you right. have a level of it. But because you've never had children, you are so... How did she put that thing? Basically, she told me that your ability to emotionally disconnect yeah. is unmatched. Mm -hmm. Like when you're done with somebody or something, you're like, like you're done. And she said, because you've never been put in a situation where you had to cultivate 
the love right. and make it grow. So she told me I needed a pet or a plant. <laughs> and I said, what? And she said, or you can you can build, uh, grow a garden. And I said, I'm not doing either one of those things. So basically, have something <laughs> that you got to be responsible for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Anita, I'm not going to... I'm not going to grow no mattress and them beans and no cabbage and corn. And I'm not getting a dog or a cat because anything that comes in my house got to bring in an income. And I'm not getting no fish. <laughs> I can't have children because I dropped my transmission a couple years just ago. Like, just, <laughs> just like black people, you go to counseling only to come back and tell the counselor what you is and ain't going to do after you don't pay them your hard earned money. I don't, I don't understand to why. To get yourself right. But I don't understand why I need to have a nurturing spirit. She what told am I, you. What am I nurturing? She what am I told nurturing? you. But what am I nurturing? I don't know. <laughs> but obviously, she understands it's going to work for you. She gave you the advice. I'm, I'm, I'm married. I don't have to nurture you. We're in a partnership. Yeah, we are. We are. So what else do I need to nurture? What do I need a nurturing spirit for? I'm just gaining skills like I went to college and, and not using it. You need. Because that's what you, happened. What she said, you need a fresh start. I don't. I don't. I'm old. You, you been. I'm not not old in age. How but did you, we get here? But you've been here nurturing me for a while. So what she's saying, you need a new challenge, man. The boo. Yeah. <laughs> the boo. But as we don't know how we got there. Uh, yeah. I did. But anyway, so my girl Kimmy was like, "Listen, I got Zeus out here. He calms me down. I've heard that too. Yeah, I heard that um, too. So Maurice comes, and this is a good opportunity to have this conversation. He got his turtleneck on, so you know when a nook got on the turtleneck, he on some BS. <laughs> Love me some Maurice, but uh, Maurice, Kimmy said, at this point, don't don't lawyer me. Uh -huh. Don't talk around the bush. Let's get this question Kimmy said, answered. Just like, Kimmy said, just like you, though. It's that DMV thing. Like, come <laughs> give, give it to me straight. Give it to me straight. Were you there, and were you bucking with the linebacker? Now, she, knew, she said she knew he was there. Oh, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she knew he was there. And she wanted to know straight up, did, you, did buck you buck the linebacker, yes or no? Kimmy. Don't, don't, yeah, don't be around the board. Don't, don't give me no analogies. Just let me know yes or no. Hey, Kimmy. <laughs> the way you're supposed to ask that question is, when you're dealing with somebody that point A has to line up with point B, you have to ask the question so that it goes like this. You said linebacker. It may not have been a linebacker, so the answer was no. Yeah. It could have been a miniature linebacker. It could have been a cheerleader. So the question was, did, did you fuck anybody? anybody? Yeah. <laughs> While you was in hot lamp. <laughs> was anybody in your bed? Did y'all meet up with anybody? Behind the scenes, when y'all was at that air B to the B, did anybody yeah. um, show up there and they were talking to you? <laughs> One on one. Now, see, she needed to ask the question like they asked on Maury. Did you have any sexual content contact of any kind with anybody other than your wife, Kimmy? We Mar ready. <laughs> Maurice, I'm giving you a hard time. But yeah. Kimmy, I'm teaching. <laughs> That's how you gotta. You, you gotta ask the questions uh -huh. the right way to get the right answer. He was like, I never mess with a linebacker. That ain't her name. <laughs> Ooh. But real talk, like, like Kimmy was like, you know, all of this brought us so much unwarranted, unneeded attention yeah. because you already have the thing that's going on. Martel started it long time ago where he was like, everybody in the group cheats. Yeah. Mark so had 20 women. I mean, uh, it was just a lot. Right. So it's like the things that we can't prove, they go dormant right. until there's something that strikes and boom. Yep. Oh, this might have been one of those instances where they, because Martel <laughs> said that he holds the cards, that he doesn't want to put it on out there because he don't want to hurt nobody's family. Yeah. Is this, so like you said, it brought up stuff that made people think. And here's the thing. A person that's not guilty don't lie about stuff <laughs> yeah. that doesn't. Um, if you were there. You were there. Yeah, right. <laughs> Why lie about being there unless there's some kind of guilt that goes along with it? Now I'm gonna say this. I don't. I don't know for sure what went down. I don't was there any cheating? But this is the way I see it. I don't think Marceau would have put that picture out there. I agree. If they was down there sleeping with other women, why would you expose yourself? 
Why would you expose your brother? So that's why I believe it was a big joke that went wrong. <laughs> you know, it was a perfect timing. You see, I was like, a joke is about timing. And so it was perfect timing, you know, and I'm pretty sure Marso always do that to them, but just this time was the wrong time. It was. <laughs> yeah. It was. And we're going to, let's go ahead and wrap that whole thing out because at this point, it has spiraled so out of control that even the brother Micah was like, you know what, I need to get the band back together. And he decided that he wanted to have a dinner where the family could get together and talk this skit out because it spiraled. Yeah. So Kimmy had an opportunity, like you said, to ask Marceau, what were you thinking? Like, why would you even do something like that? And in his <laughs> mind, he's like, that stuff doesn't phase me. Yeah. In actuality, Marceau kind of displays a little bit of nonsense <laughs> where <laughs> bad attention is also good attention. and yeah. But it doesn't affect him negatively because right. he's like, Haha, I got y'all talking about me mm -hmm. once again. But the people around you actually absorb it and right. they live it and they, they harbor that feeling. And as much as Tisha says she does it, she does. Yeah. And that's what Kimmy was saying. <laughs> and I love how even with her and Tisha not being on the best of terms, she always looks out for Tisha's feelings. Right. Even in this situation right here, she was like, but how it makes me feel. I got it. And I don't think that my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, I don't think he cheated. And like you said, I don't think he did either. Like no. Marceau said, I just thought it was a, a you funny, go, yeah. You will get in trouble with your wifey for lying about right. being there. But right. Do you think he would have put the picture out if he was actually bucking with somebody? Yeah, there? well, nah. nah. That's like real bro, bro, bro. Yeah, code. right. Because <laughs> um, then that would impl put you in the middle of it too. Because like, of so the, because who, of the who same. Who bucking and ain't nobody? Everybody else bucking. Because at the same time, they wouldn't have just. It wouldn't have been a minor argument. Maurice and Marceau would have been fighting. Yeah, it been physical. Say, like, what in the yeah. world are you doing? Yeah. And to the point where Kimmy was like, "Listen, as much as I love Maurice." After marriage, this would have been a wrap. That's deal breaker. You know, man. it's a deal breaker to, yeah. And even like, like <laughs> so, but I don't think nothing happened. But we joking around. But it did. It did look sus. Yeah, it did. It looked yeah. real sus, especially when you said I wasn't there. Like, yeah, like, the, like the Bible say, don't, don't let your good be evil spoken of. That's it. And your good is being evil spoken of right now, man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need you. <laughs> Confess your sins and <laughs> Alright, so we saw um, Mel finally. I was like, are we going to have an episode where we don't see Mel at all? But her and Kimmy met up over a charcuterie board. Because you know that's what the people said. <laughs> charcuterie or charcuterie board. And so basically we got this scene because Mel was like, uh, you okay sis? Like you seem like you in good spirits but I want to check on you for real because all that skit that went down, I know that it affected you negatively. And real fast, Kimmy was looking stressed out like, uh -huh. listen, all my life I had to fight. <laughs> and I don't fought for my piece too long and hard to have it go down like this. So, you know, long story short, Mel ends up telling Kimmy that, listen, me and Destiny don't buck with each other no more. Because when we were in L.A., our rooms were next door to each other. And I could hear her and Tisha over in there talking and have a conversation, but there was one part in there where I heard Tisha say, yeah, that's because Mel is a Scorpio, which led her to believe that they was having a really bad conversation about her. She said that she went over there and knocked on the door or whatnot and was like, y'all need to keep it down because I can hear what y'all say. But she said later on, Destiny came and they had an interaction and Destiny uh, apologized, apologized to her, but she's still not really bucking with her <clears throat> like that. But while I'm telling you I don't buck with her like that, I'm about to have a pajama party, and I'm going to invite my friends, you, not them too. Don't tell them about it, because y'all like to invite <laughs> people that ain't invited. They, they shouldn't know nothing about it. And Kimmy was like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Wait. You're not going to invite them? That That's <laughs> the part of friendships that I don't like. I don't like it either. Yeah, because, it, yeah, you throwing shade at them, but you bringing me in on it. Yeah. And you bring Kimmy in on this drama that she shouldn't be brought in on. Especially like it, like, cause we know that right. this is going to come up at the slumber party. I don't even want to be an earshot of it. I'd rather for you just to invited me to the pajama party. I got there and I'd be like, where's Tisha and um, Destiny? Oh, I invite them. Oh, so okay. at least then 
you didn't pre-talk to me. I don't <laughs> I don't know about it. Yeah. So now Kimmy knows that there's a pajama party coming up. That y'all you, are you purposely gonna be, yeah, not invited So you're going to gonna be around them again. That you got to keep this from them. And you going. Yeah. So it looks like y'all working together. It does. Yeah. I didn't like, even think yeah, about it like y'all like working that. together. Even, yeah. though, even though we know they're not. Yeah. It's like <clears throat> grown women, but you put them yeah. in a child's place. Right. Yeah. I don't like that at all. But, but, we, but we know if it comes up, Kimmy ain't about to backpedal and, and push pop. She's going to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. She's going to say, yeah, yeah, Mel told me in the beginning that this party was going on and that y'all won't be invited. Yeah. She, Mel's she energy was different this episode. Like her energy fluctuates anyway, but her energy was on a whole nother mm -hmm. level on this episode and whatnot. So let's go ahead and talk about Destiny, right? So we see our Destiny in the studio and whatnot. And I kind of forgot that Destiny said that she dibbled and dabbled and singing and, singing and stuff like yeah, that. So too. Tisha had came to, you know, support her and whatnot. And they had gotten really close since the last time that we've seen them and whatnot. And shout out to them for getting a commercial with Kaleidoscope, Big Booty Judy. I said, <laughs> it was a little cringe, but it's, it, it worked. <laughs> but um, Tisha brought up the magic question, like, have any of your friends, like, supported you? Or how do they take you dibbling dabbling back into this music industry thing? And that, of course, that was a question to bring up whether or not her and Mel were on good terms of talking. Or was Mel being supportive? Because from one person, from one artist to the next, how, how is it? Well, Destiny was like this, and we don't talk. We don't yeah. talk at all, you know. Ever since I've been rocking with you, she told me that I can't rock with you because you and her are enemies. And Tisha was like, we're not enemies. <laughs> we're not. I mean, I thought we were cool. But <clears throat> enemies, like, that is a little harsh. <laughs> that That's a hard word to say. Yeah. Like, we enemies. Like, yeah, because I thought they were good now. I really did. I thought Tisha and, and Melody was actually... Kind of, I knew there was still was some rough edges, but yeah. I didn't know they backed all the way up to enemies. Yeah, I don't think enemies anybody is strong, did. Yeah. yeah, enemies is a strong word. Cause enemies means that you're trying to literally you're trying to get. Yeah, me. you're trying to destroy me. I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so within this conversation, um, <clears throat> Destiny, she got a little transparent. Yeah. And she was saying that you know during the pandemic it would not. Mm, hold on. <laughs> Destiny got really transparent yeah. during this episode, and she said, you know, during the pandemic, a lot just went wrong in her life. And she said she used to be the person that would give people money, give her her, um, her daddy money. And next thing you know, now her daddy's having Didn't to give, give her, her money. money. Yeah. She said she went from making buku money in a, in a career to leaving a career to start her own business, mm -hmm. from starting her own business to getting pregnant, to getting divorced, being a single mom, yeah. boom, in the middle mm. of a pandemic, all the way from having to live off of needing assistance. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa. Yeah. How did she said she went through a 401k? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I think I think what she did was was when she started her business and what typically what we do when we start out business, go all we go in. all in. So she probably took a lot of her savings, and which you should. I mean, if you believe in something, either go big or go home if you believe in it. And I think you know we was all blindsided by the by the pandemic, so there's no way that you could plan for yeah it. that you could almost plan three for years that. of shutdown. Yeah, so I would in no way judge her for that. No, because you took your you took your money and you try to come up. It's different than those cats. That you took your money and buying BMWs with the PPP loan and and and, and new houses and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, cats going to jail for that now. Uh -huh. You actually took uh, your money. Impala with a hundred thousand. Yeah, so you actually try to take your money and, and come up, you know, mm -hmm. the the legal way. So I much respect Look, for that. Let me tell you something real good. <clears throat> if you could get a way to get money out of the government legally and and it's really due to you. Oh yeah. Do it. Right. <laughs> do it. Because I wish I could. I couldn't. <clears throat> Look, I got my mama living with me, and she disabled, right. and they won't even give me money for her living here. <laughs> <Right. laughs> I'm but, sitting there like, what? <laughs> but but once again, I do appreciate um, Destiny being transparent because yes. a lot of times we think that people just, you know, just fall into success that, you know, overnight you successful, but you got to go through something, man. I'm telling you, you got to go through something to be there, and I'm glad that, you know, she wasn't an overnight success. Right. So, right. But, but like you said, the drama overshadows that sometime on this show. So mm -hmm. I know a lot of people don't like Destiny, but 
You cannot like argue, but you, but you can't argue with her success. So yeah, man, Destiny, you watching? Yeah, yeah. Kudos to you for that success and and actually coming out the hole because you yeah. could have like a lot of people play get in pity parties when they get knocked off their horse. Yeah. But you decided to get back on your horse and ride, man, and you succeeding. So yeah. Shout that's out it. to you, man. That's all right. That's inspiring. She was. She was. She, she, was, hit, she was hit with a lot at one time. Yeah, that's inspiring to motivate, man. She, yeah, she had a hair store where yeah. face to face at the beginning couldn't happen, so that mm -hmm. was shut down unless yeah. she had an online store. Single mom. Yeah. In the middle of divorce, divorces are expensive, so I yep. yeah yeah and still be able to to succeed and 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 come back up from that. Boom. Yeah. yeah. So all in all, I think we hit on everything that was pretty much important. I, yeah. I think this season is going to be like the other seasons where we're going to ride out this picture. This picture going to be, yeah. For a very long time. Yeah. We're going to see Mel and Martell. We're going to see Destiny and Mel not being friends. We're going to see Tisha <laughs> and her cousin getting into it because some kind of way Tisha's cousin got pulled into the Mel squad. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like there's going to be a lot. Um, But thank God that it seems like Marceau is doing not what it takes to deal with his um, depression. with his depression, but he he actually he's moving towards a resolution that for it. acceptable to him. Yeah, <laughs> but next time you go out the country like that, yeah, you better take Tisha. Yeah, you gotta yeah, you, yeah. gotta talk about that. From one yeah. introvert, I don't know if you're an introvert or not. You right. got introvert tendencies, and you need to you need to yeah. genuinely apologize to Tish, Mar Maurice, and to um Kimmy. Kim. And Michael putting that picture out there will fail. Michael probably, too, but Michael was, stressed out. Yeah, you need to apologize. Without an explanation that they shouldn't care about what people say. Not everybody is dead yet. Everybody ain't built like that. And yeah, your wife dead. is the main one that's right. not built like mm -hmm. that. She absorbs it. <laughs> and like uh, <laughs> and Mel said it best. She says she don't read the comments, but she in yeah, the, the comments, comments commenting yeah. on the comment. Yep. Listen. Well, all right, y'all. Y'all get down in the comments. Let us know what y'all think. Straight from the VA. There it is. Two up, two, two down. down. Holla. Boom.